This next story is a story that I've worked on for a while. I've had this video made for a while, and I've kind of just been holding on to it, looking for more information. It kind of goes into several different parts. So I will probably make this into a two-part video because it involves one man, one missing man, and his link to someone who's thought to be responsible for his, his disappearance. But then it goes back to another story that I did on another missing man um, who may also have been linked to this man thought to be guilty. And while I, no one has been able to find a true connection to him other than um, the man that is believed to maybe be the guilty person here was living in Floyd County, Kentucky at the time that this man went missing. Now, the one that I did the story on is named Mitchell Manns, and he was from Floyd County, Kentucky. There, ha there has been no update, but I'm going to do a quick reminder about his story before I get into this next story. Now, Mitchell Manns has been missing since March the 16th, 1990, from Martin, Kentucky, which is in Floyd County. He was a, a white male, and he was 38 years old when he went missing. He would be 72 today. He was six foot one and weighed 300 pounds. He was last known to have been wearing a white t-shirt, blue work pants like like Dickie's type of work paints, and blue all-star sneakers. He had brown hair and hazel eyes. Mans was last seen at the Triangle Mart in Martin, Kentucky. He was supposedly en route to MacDowell Hospital, but never arrived there and has never been heard from again. Now, before I get into this story about the Southern man, I'm going to say... Someone on the Facebook page reached out to me and sent me a message and gave me a little bit of information, but I'm not going to go into detail about who this person is and their connection or any of that, but I will just say this. They said that they found my video on YouTube. Mitchell has not been found as of today, however... There has been many different stories about what happened to him. One person told that before it was heard from anyone else that he was murdered and his body was placed in Arkansas Creek by the same man that everyone else said he was killed by. This Mitchell at the gas station that day and offered him a ride However, Mitchell declined and got into an older red truck. The man said he had never seen the truck before, but that there were two other people in the vehicle. They found a horse that was shot and died on Arkansas Creek. And then they go back to that spot and dig a little bit deeper. And if they search that area, there were some rumors going around that he had been taken up there and shot or his body had been disposed of in that holler, Arkansas Creek, and that they searched the area and they found that a horse had been shot up there and they were searching that area because they thought maybe someone had used this dead horse to conceal the smell of the decaying body of Mitchell. I'm not sure if that's what they were getting at, but that's what it seems like. They said that they searched the mine shafts and other areas up in that area. And that was basically all that they offered was just the rumor. And the, the rumor that he had been killed and buried or thrown or disposed of in Arkansas Creek. I don't know what the, the details of that were. I don't know if this was some type of um, someone that he had made angry, he was having trouble with, if it was if he had a past a history of 
of problems with anybody. Now, in one story, it says that he was seen walking out of the Triangle Mart. This man says that he saw him getting into an older red pickup truck. Did the police, did this man come forward and tell the police this at the time? So this brings me to the story that is connected possibly to this. And this is the story of Harry Eugene Hale. There was speculation that Harry Eugene Hale was connected to the disappearance of Mitchell Manns. Hale was convicted of credit card fraud in 1993 after he used a card belonging to a man who had been reported missing in Georgia in 1992. Hale had a reputation for stalking bus stations and highways, searching for young male transients. He is suspected of drugging and sexually assaulting young men in several different states. Now, this was the reason, this was one thing that kind of swayed me away from this Harry Hill being involved with Mitchell Manns because Mitchell Manns was six foot one and 300 pounds. He was a large man. This Harry Eugene Hill searched bus stations and, and drove around looking for hitchhikers of young men who probably were not really large, um, men that he could overtake easier. Like I said, there's always the um, possibility uh, that he just was just driving along and saw Mitchell Manson and decided, why not? I'll pick him up. I don't know if there's any connection there or not. It, the reason that they thought there might be was because Harry Hill was supposedly staying in Floyd County at the time that this happened with his mother or at a home that belonged to his mother. Now, this is where the belongings were found of the man who had gone missing in Georgia. Now, as far as I know, never charged with anything in connection to this disappearance of this man from Georgia, or that was in Georgia other than the fact that he was found to be in possession of his credit card and some of his other belongings. And all the stories pretty much come back to the same thing. It all comes back to this Harry Eugene Hale and his possible connection to Mitchell Manns. Harry Hale searched out bus stations hitchhikers. He was looking for people who were maybe down on their luck, maybe were kind of alone, traveling at a bus station, and and this this young man named Christoph Son, um, whose belongings were found to be, Harry Hill was using his credit card, he was using his identity to book a hotel room, and his belong- some of his other belongings were found in his home in Floyd County. So, Christoph Zahn went missing on April the 28th, 1992, from Atlanta, Georgia. He was 21 years old at the time of his disappearance. He was 6 foot tall and 160 pounds. Now, let me say something me go backtrack just a little bit I said that I didn't really want I wondered if Harry Eugene Hill would have targeted Mitchell Manns because he was a very tall and, and heavy built man but Christoph Zahn was six foot and 160 pounds so maybe he you know maybe he was able to subdue them in some way using some type of taser or drug or something. Christoph was 21 years old, and he was last known to have been wearing a turquoise cap and blue jeans. He was a white male with light brown hair and brown eyes. He is a Swiss national and has dual citizenship in America. He speaks English with a slight German accent, and... um. He does not drink. 
liked alcohol. He would not have been hanging out in any bars or um, anything like that. Son had traveled from his native Switzerland to the United States in 1992, and he planned to take a tour of the country's cities and national parks. After arriving in Florida, he took an overnight bus from Jacksonville, Florida, to Atlanta, Georgia, on April the 28th. He checked into the American Hotel across the street from the bus station. Now, Harry Eugene Hale was known to hang around bus stations, keeping an eye out for men who were alone, young men. Son placed a call to his travel agent in Orange County, Florida, at 4.15 that day. He called from a payphone in Tucker, Georgia, at a Denny's restaurant. He confirmed a May 19 reservation in Las Vegas, but he was never heard from again after that. So this was before cell phones, and what he was doing was his itinerary, his his, um, booking his trips through a travel agent. He didn't have access to a phone where he could just, you know, make the arrangements at the tap of a finger so he was using phones to call ahead to make sure that the reservations had been made and stuff like that now this was the last day that he was ever heard from april the 28th but his credit card was used 31 times between april the 30th and may the 11th in cobb county and carroll county georgia The card used up to $2,800 worth of liquor, motel rooms, cologne, jewelry, and other items. Now, back to the story, the family said he never drank. So they knew that he was not the person using the credit card. Because he was not going to spend his traveling money on stuff like liquor and jewelry. Harry Eugene Hale was arrested in February of 1993 and convicted of credit card fraud in the case of Zahn's um, missing credit card or stolen credit card. He admitted to using the card but says that Chris Zahn allowed him, that he owed him money. Chris Zahn supposedly owed Harry Hale money and gave him his credit card and told him, go buy what you want. If Christoph Son had enough money on his credit card and he owed this man money, why didn't he just go draw out the cash and say that authorities suspect that Hale murdered Son in order to get his credit card? But I don't know if he if he murdered him in order to get his credit card or if the credit card was just a bonus. Because if he was known to hang around bus stations and pick up vulnerable hitchhikers, he probably had other motives in mind than money. The credit card was probably just something that he was able to find on this man's, you know, in his belongings. They were never able to get enough evidence to charge him in connection to Zahn's disappearance. Hometown is in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. Now that brings me back to Floyd County, which is where Prestonsburg, Kentucky is. And the link and the reason the police believe he may have been um, responsible possibly for this Mitchell Manns having gone missing. Now he has not been charged in connection with either disappearance. And had it not been for this Christoph Son going missing in Georgia, you know, this, this Mitchell man's name may not even really have been thrown around very much. Family, I don't know if he was married, if he had children, if he was a single man. These people, somebody reported him missing. A mother, a father, a brother, somebody reported this man missing. There has to be something somewhere out there about who reported him missing. And, you know, I have not been able to find 
anything. It, it's sad, like I was saying earlier, sometimes, and you find out so much about some people who go missing, you find out everything about them. The news media are relentless. The TV shows, the talk shows, the threads and the, and the YouTube channels are 24-7 coverage. And then somebody like this, you cannot find hardly anything whatsoever out about them. You know, somebody loved this man. Somebody missed this man enough that they started looking for him and called and reported him missing to the police. So why is there so very little on him and who he was? And uh, 1990, it was still just missing posters and but I don't even know if, if any of that, anything like that was put up, you know. I, but he did not arrive, and so that is where his story kind of just comes to a dead end for me. This, there's, there's a lot more information on this missing young man than there was on the one that I talked about in part one. He went missing April the 28th, 1992, from Atlanta, Georgia. He's... He's um, white, and he was 21 years old at the time that he went missing. He was six foot tall and 160 pounds. He was last known to be wearing a turquoise cap and blue jeans. He was Caucasian with light brown hair and brown eyes. He is a Swiss national and has dual citizenship with both America and Switzerland. He had traveled from his native Switzerland to the United States in 1992. He planned to make a tour of the country's major cities and national parks. After arriving in Florida, he took an overnight bus from Jacksonville to Atlanta. He checked into, an Ameri into the American Hotel across the street from the bus station. He placed a phone call to his travel agent in Orange County, Florida at approximately 4.15 that day. He called from a payphone in Tucker, Georgia at a Denny's restaurant on Mountain Industrial Boulevard and confirmed a reservation for May 19th in Las Vegas, Nevada. He was never heard from again. His credit card was used 31 times between April the 30th and May 11th, 1992, in Cobb and Carroll County, Georgia. The card paid for $2,800 worth of liquor, hotel rooms, cologne, jewelry, and other items. Harry Eugene Hale was arrested in February of 1993 and convicted of credit card fraud in this case. Harry Hale admitted to using the card but says Son allowed him to use the card in order to repay a debt. Authorities suspect that Hale may have murdered Son in order to utilize his credit cards, but they have never found enough evidence to charge him. See, this young man was 21 years old. This is the type of young man that he targeted. Young, vulnerable, being alone. Possibly young men who drank or used drugs that he might have been able to lure more easily with the promise of partying. That's why these two young guys that talked to the police said that he had tried to, you know, he was using this young man's name, this Christoph Sons name, and using his credit card. And I, this is why I had a problem with Mitchell Manns being connected to him because Mitchell Manns was 38 years old. He was a larger man. He was tall. He, he would not fit the um, type of person that this Harry Hale would, be, would think that he would be able to subdue unless he had seen him prior to this and, and thought maybe he was intoxicated or, but there was nothing in anything I could find about Mitchell Manns I, you know, in his story that said anything like that. Um, he did not have a cell phone or anything like that in 1992.
two, when he went missing, they reached out to the travel agency to see if he had made it to his next um, location. And he had not. The last time that the travel agent had heard from him was on this date, April 28th, when he had reached out to confirm that he was going to keep the, his reservation in Las Vegas. So this is how the family come to learn that he had not been, that he had not made it to his next destination. Because they said that he would call often and he had not called them. Here is what the circumstances. Mr. Son had set out on an American tour, tour in September of 1991 and had stayed with numerous friends around the country. He stayed with family, friends over the Christmas holiday and he had kept in touch with them via phone calls and letters as he continued his travels. The Van Norden family had last heard from Chris via a letter sometime in April and they never heard from him again. In May, the Van Nordens informed Christoph's mother that they had lost touch with him and had not heard from him. His mother also had not heard from her son since April. He had mentioned that he would be returning home early from his trip, but his mother had bought him a prepaid airline ticket and he never picked it up. Thanks to the work of a private investigator hired by his family, it was determined that his MasterCard had been used several times after his disappearance in the Atlanta area. His credit card was used 31 times. After viewing video surveillance and gathering additional information, in February of 1993, authorities executed a search warrant on a Kentucky home belonging to Harry Eugene Hale, where they found Son's camera bags, two cameras, and a quilt. He was arrested and convicted in connection with the fraudulent credit card transactions. He was arrested in Miami, Florida on warrants on three counts of forgery and fraudulent credit card use. A Secret Service agent and instructor at the law enforcement, Richard Jones, obtained a number of credit card receipts for Son's credit card and found that it had been used at a food and beverage at Bimbo's Saloon and Eatery on April the 30th, 1992, a Red Roof Inn, and a Mink package store on May 7th. Um, Jones was able to obtain a security video footage from the Minx on May the 7th and match the cash register receipt. He was able to find a picture of a white male slightly balding using the credit card. This was not Christoph Son. This was the first lead obtained in um, who had this credit card. Jones also obtained a motel receipt from a Carlton motel showing a room rental in Son's name. He determined that three phone calls were made from that room, including two calls traced to two local teenagers. Um, talking to these young men, Jones discovered that they had met a man using the name Christoph while they were visiting the mall in the spring of 1992. They said he had a funny accent and told them he was from Switzerland. They talked to him for about 15 minutes and he gave, and gave them his, their phone numbers. Law enforcement authorities contacted the two young men and they were brought in for questioning and they were shown a drawing of of, they were shown pictures of Christoph Son and a drawing of Harry Hale. They identified Hale and had uh, said that this was the man that they had talked to. Found in Hale's bedroom during the search was Son's camera bag and his handwritten name tag partially obliterated by a black magic marker. 
two cameras, and an Amish quilt that Son had purchased in Pennsylvania as a gift for his mother. The officers also found numerous canceled checks and a handwritten two-page letter bearing the signature Harry Hill. How did he end up with his stuff? He claims that he found it. Because of the nature of his trip, Son was not known to be missing until May after the fraudulent use of his credit card had taken place. It took several more months for police to find the identity of the man using it. Unsuccessful attempts to find hell continued until the Kentucky address was obtained. There was no charges brought against him for any criminal activity toward the disappearance of Zahn. As of right now, there's been no sightings of either Mitchell Manns or Christoph Zahn. Is that the only lead that the police I mean, I don't even—I don't even know if I would consider that a lead. That's more like a speculation. For the Kentucky State Police, the Floyd County Sheriff's Office, when this Mitchell man's went missing, uh, other than the fact that Harry Hill—and keep in mind, he went missing in 1990, and all this stuff didn't take place with this Christoph Zahn. In Floyd County, they didn't discover his belongings until 1993. So in the three years between the time Mitchell Manns went missing and Harry Hale was discovered to have this man's belongings, was he arrested in Floyd County? Was he, was it rumored around that he was picking up men? Is that all that the police had to go on was three years later? And then suddenly one, someone in the police force said, maybe he, he was here and was responsible for this guy going missing. Um, there was a, a man who went missing in Wise, Virginia, Wise County, Virginia, in, in the Norton, Virginia area. And his body was discovered over a, uh, down a hillside, like down in like a creek in a ravine area. Some people speculated that he had been hit by a car and or a, a truck of some kind and knocked down in there. It's possible. The only thing that I saw and, and speculated myself was that from the area where he was last seen to, the, to where he was walking to um, was on the opposite side of the road. He would have been walking on the opposite side of the creek. So unless he changed his mind and changed course and started to go back and a car came along and hit him and knocked him over the railing into the creek and the driver just kept on going. I don't know if that's what happened or if someone murdered him and threw him down in there or if he just simply stumbled down in there, broke a bone, broke his leg or his hip or something and couldn't get back up out of there. You know, would his body not have been found? Did they go search on foot and walk along these roadways and the area in this 13-mile stretch from this hospital to this gas station? Did they do a foot search? Did they check creeks? Did they check... Did they ask people along homes in those areas? Did you happen to see a three, a six-foot-tall, 300-pound man with a injured arm and a pair of work pants on? walking along the roadway here. Maybe they did, but if they did, there's so little information on the internet about it. Also, to wrap this up, as far as Christoph Zahn, I speculate that when he got off of that bus, and if he was there for maybe two nights, he was planning to get back on the bus to go on to his next destination, at some point, probably on his second day there, he came into contact with this Harry Hill. Um, he may have um, 
met up with him at the hotel they may have been staying at. Or Harry Hill may have just been hanging around outside the bus station that was said to be right directly across the street from the hotel. He may have met him as soon as he stepped off of the bus and befriended him and spent, you know, time hanging out with him while he was there in that town. And maybe he even offered him a ride. Maybe that's how he got him in his car and was able to do whatever he did to him and dispose of his remains that have not been found to this day. It's just speculation, but at some point he came into contact with his belongings and his credit cards, so we know that he had to have been in the same area that he was in. And this was 30 years ago, 31 years ago. Um, this man with Christoph Zahn, he would only be in his 50s right now. Are his family, or you know, are his parents still alive? Are they still searching for him? Are they still searching for answers? Um, maybe brothers and sisters. You think about that. That's something that weighs on my mind and I think about. Whether it's a young child, two, three, four years of age that goes missing, or whether it's someone who's 38 years old, their mother, if she's alive at the time, if she's there, their father, their grandparents, their friends, family members, there is somebody who will spend the rest of their life never knowing what ever happened to their loved one. They'll go to their grave not knowing and not ever having any peace as long as they're breathing as to what happened to this person. Like I said, I know my videos don't do justice to some of these stories, but that's the reason I talk about these stories is because somebody out there is sitting in their home right now wondering what ever happened to my son or my daughter or my sister. And as for Harry Hill, he has been released from prison. He, his release date was January the 2nd, 2024. I don't know his whereabouts now. I don't know if he returned to Kentucky or if he's back in Georgia or Florida. I don't know if Harry Hill will ever talk. I, I, he hasn't been charged. There was a possibility that Floyd County people were asking if Floyd County planned to prosecute him. I doubt it. And, uh, but I am going to go through his history of some people that were suspected, some missing men who were thought to maybe possibly have been victims of his. There's no proof, just like there's no proof that he had anything to do with Mitchell Manns. And I'll just wrap this video up by saying that these cases still remain code cases, unsolved cases. And thanks for watching.